Welcome to Planetary Imaging, Registax 6 Wavelet tab, right side. Registax 6 has many functions useful for planetary imaging. It will read an AVI movie file of your planet and align and stack the frames to give you a single stacked image. This stacked image can then be further enhanced using the functions on the Wavelet tab. Since Registax came out, another program called AutoStacker 2 has been developed which specializes in just aligning and stacking. Many people prefer to use AutoStacker for stacking and then use Registax for wavelet processing. To skip the stacking portion of Registax, simply click on the select button and browse to open your already stacked image. Registax will then automatically take you to the wavelet tab. We now see the screen that is the wavelet tab. In this video, I'm going to cover some of the functions that are on the right side. I have another video where I show you what I know about wavelet sharpening, which is done using the controls on the left side of the screen. On the right side, we have this 5x3 array of buttons, these contrast and brightness controls, and this bottom thing I haven't tried yet. I now only use the histogram and RGB balance functions, and I'll spend most of the time here talking about them. Then, I'll briefly demonstrate how to use three others. Clicking on the histogram and RGB balance buttons brings up these two windows. Both show a histogram. I have a separate video on histograms if you're not familiar with them. The histogram shows a relative number of pixels for each brightness level. The x-axis goes from 0 on the left to 255 on the right. If you're editing a 16-bit file, then the highest brightness level is over 65,000 instead of 255 but this histogram control considers it as if it were scaled to 8 bits. This bump on the left is due to all the nearly black pixels around the planet. Checking the log base graft option, we can see where the planet pixels are. Notice that there are no pixels at these brightest levels. This was done on purpose because wavelet sharpening will cause some pixels to become brighter and we don't want any parts of our image to become washed out. Because our computers aren't infinitely fast, ReadyStax only works on a portion of the picture until we hit the Do All button. You can select how large you want the processing area to be in the Settings menu. I'll set it to 256, which is much smaller than this image. You can see the processing area by checking the Show Processing Area checkbox, and you can move that processing area around by clicking on the image. The processing area is denoted by these small angle markings at each corner. Notice how the histogram only looks at the processing area. When I move the processing area between the planet and the dark sky, the histogram changes. My computer is fast enough to handle a 1024 square processing area, which is bigger than this Jupiter picture. Notice that we have more green than the other colors. We can use RGB balance to adjust our colors to something more natural by adjusting these color weighting values. Sometimes it is best to use auto balance, although it can give crazy results. I have learned a couple of things to help it out. The first thing is to start from scratch. Push the reset button if you've already made changes. Then push the auto balance button. Auto balance considers the entire processing area, even though most of it may be very dark. Using the histogram control, we can zero out all these dark pixels. Being zeroed out, they no longer have any color imbalance and then the auto balance feature will only be considering the planet portion of the picture. Auto balance seems to try to make the clouds of Jupiter white and also the rings of Saturn. It doesn't work for Mars though. What I do for Mars is manually set the color weighting values. I take the values that auto balance comes up with for Jupiter and Saturn and take the average. Even when the processing area is larger than the image, you have to be careful. Notice what happens when I click down here. The processing area has, be, has been centered here. This can happen when you bring up another window, perhaps to check your email, and then you click back on the Registax window to bring it to the top. Remember to avoid clicking on the image or the white space around the image, or you can click on the center of the planet. Notice that each of these functions has a reset button. You can make many changes and then go press all the reset buttons and end up back where you started. It seems that Registax keeps the original image in memory and then has a series of modifications that are applied in sequence to get to the final image we see on the screen. I suspect that the order that these changes are applied is fixed in software. 
This histogram panel has a bunch of controls on it. This drop-down control allows you to select individual colors to operate on. The log base graph checkbox is needed when you have a wide range of Y values. If you have 10,000 pixels with one brightness value and only 100 pixels with another brightness value, it is hard to see the 100 when the graph goes from 0 to 10,000. By taking the log of the Y values, their difference is minimized. Notice that this checkbox also affects the histogram display in the RGB balance window. This triangle allows you to shift the histogram left or right. This edit box with the up-down arrows will display a value representing the shift. My version of Registax hasn't yet fixed it, so that changing this number will have any effect on the amount of shift. This control doesn't do anything except display a number. There are red lines on the right and left. You can slide them inward to stretch the histogram. The red lines can also be controlled by these edit boxes with spin controls. The stretching won't occur until you press the stretch button, but if you check the direct checkbox, then you don't need to press the stretch button. The stretching will occur continually. Notice that after you bring one of these red lines inwards, you can't drag them back outwards. You have to use the control down here, or you can press the reset button and undo all the changes made by this histogram control. This graph smooths control seems to only affect the display of the histogram. I haven't played with it much. I typically only use the histogram in RGB balance functions. I stop by chopping off any big bump here on the left, then I do the auto balance on the RGB balance window. When you've done all the processing you're going to do, including the wavelet sharpening, you might want to brighten the picture by chopping off this empty space on the right side of the histogram. This should be the very last thing you do. RGB Align is really handy for color pictures. The atmosphere bends the different colors of light different amounts and it messes up your pictures. It is most noticeable when the planet is near the horizon. You end up with an orange tinge on one side and blue on the other. The orange side is the side closest to the horizon. The RGB Align control does a good job of fixing things. Check the Show Area checkbox and then position the green rectangle around the planet. Then press the Estimate button and watch the progress bar on the bottom left. Sometimes the progress bar will hang up and you'll have to watch the Estimate button to know when it's done. I blame Microsoft for that. The Estimate button will become orange while it is processing and change back to gray when done. Also, the Show Area checkbox is unchecked and the green rectangle disappears when it is done. It seems that the RGB Align function is done first. It only sees the original image. Any changes you've already made with the other functions will not affect the amount of RGB Align color shift you get. RGB Alignment has now been added to AutoStackert, so we don't have to use it in Registacks. This makes me happy because RGB Align used to take up most of my processing time in Registacks. I almost never apply gamma to my images. When I do, it is usually to brighten the darkest parts of the image without increasing the brightness of the brighter parts. The x-axis is the brightness of the original image, and the y-axis is the brightness afterwards. By moving the curve like this, you can see how it increases the dimmer pixels without increasing the brighter ones. Reading the instructions here, we learn that right-clicking creates more pivot points. You get a spline curve fit through the points unless you check the linear checkbox, which causes a straight line between the points. If you change the value in this box here, then you get a curve based on a formula and your pivot points are lost. If you want to use some gamma in your pictures and you want to do several the same way, for example if you're doing an animation, then use the Save Load options here on the top. Save the way you set up the first one and then apply it to the rest using the Load option. If you want to learn more about this, then Google Gamma Correction. Do not Google Gamma Function. The Gamma Function is a math term while Gamma Correction is something used in image processing. If you want to see the formula, then Google Gamma Correction Formula. There's one last control that I sometimes use, and that is the saturation slider on the color mixing window. If I use it, I normally want to add a tiny amount. Suppose you want to move this slider until you get a saturation value of 5. It's not that easy when using the mouse. Once you have clicked on the slider though, it then has focus, and you can use the left-right arrow keys to move the value one notch at a time. 
Notice that the color mixing control is actually two separate controls in one window. The reset button here only applies to the top part and the reset HSL button applies to the bottom part. When you open a new file, Registack goes and pushes all the reset buttons on all the controls, but it misses this reset HSL button. Any changes you make in the bottom part of this window will persist when you open another image, unless of course if you get out of Registacks altogether and rerun from scratch. There are many more functions and I encourage you to check them out. Just knowing about them makes it more likely you will use them in the future. This is the end of this video. If you'd like to learn more, then watch some of my other videos. There is a video on using the left side of the Wavelet tab where I show you what I have learned so far about Wavelet processing in Registax. I made another video where I briefly show you how to use AutoStacker to stack your planet movies. The histogram video shows how to use histograms for both capture and processing. To get to the listing of all my videos on planetary imaging, click on the bottom right quadrant.